वेलकम टू द न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ लिविंग एंड डॉर्मेंट पॉलीमराइजेशन नाउ दीज टू थिंग्स आर अनकॉमन बट प्ले वेरी वाइटल रोल इन पॉलीमर रिएक्शन इंजीनियरिंग नाउ बिफोर वी गो इन टू डिटेल लेट्स लुक दैट वॉट वी कवर्ड प्रीवियसली वी हैड अ डिस्कशन अबाउट द पॉपुलेशन बैलेंस कॉन्सेप्ट एंड इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंस इन द पॉलीमर रिएक्शन इंजीनियरिंग we discussed about the implementation of various parameters in the emulsion polymerization now in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about the comparison between ionic and radical polymerization we will have a discussion discussion about the living polymers uh, thereafter we will discuss about the dormant polymers and polymerizability of all these living and dormant polymers now before we go into detail let's have a comparative note uh, between ionic and radical polymerization now ionic polymerization we have already discussed in detail about this ionic polymerization these polymerization like the well known radical polymerization it's a chain polyaddition now it begins with the reaction of a monomer with a species capable of forming an electrically charged or high polar active group now interaction of these groups with another molecule of the monomer results in the formation of covalent bond between these two groups because ultimately whenever we talk about the polymer or formation of the polymer chain then definitely we have to look into some affinity concept between the monomers and the chain and a monomer so that's why these uh, charged particles on charged radical uh, ions they are having the capability of interaction in the, so that they can form the covalent bond simultaneously the active group is continuously being regenerated in the newly inserted molecule and ionic polymerization is referred as the classical cationic polymerization when active terminal group is positively charged now ionic polymerization is uh, referred to as the pseudo cationic for or a cationic coordination uh, when this group forms the positive end of an active dipole it is uh, sometimes referred to as the classical anionic when the charge of the active group is negative ionic polymerization is sometimes referred as a pseudo anionic or an anionic coordination when the active group forms the negative end of an active dipole so this is the difference among pseudo cationic classic anionic and pseudo anionic one now let's have a small thing about the radical polymerization it is initiated by adding a small radical derived from an appropriate initiator to the monomer molecule now the added radical they forms the tail group of the polymer that is ultimately formed however its existence does not affect the rate constant of propagation the selectivity of the or um, stereochemistry of the subsequent propagation so all these uh, characteristics of radical polymerization or radical propagation are defined by the nature of polymerized monomer it is quite obvious number 2 by the condition prevailing the reaction such as temperature pressure or lesser degree the solvent nature etc so all these things are the contributing factor in this regard the nature of the solvent or the the ultimate unit that has the marginal impact on the rate of most radical polymerization so this type of approach need to be considered the class of monomers polymerized by the radical mechanism is restricted by to the vinyl vinylidene and diene uh, forms now there are several additional monomers like aldehydes ketones various heterocyclic and so on they are not polymerizable by the radical technique now uh, just uh, for the sake of an example i would like to give uh, an example related to the polymerization of isobutene now isobutene is not polymerized either by a radical or an ionic process so a cationic polymerization mode is the only one that produces a high molecular weight of polyisobutene and it's having the vast industrial application in different course of chemical aspect 
Now, a high molecular weight polyisobutane may be formed by the radical mechanism at a very low temperature if the activation energy of its propagation is lower because you know that activation energy during the propagation aspect play a very vital role. Now, let us have an example of uh, the living polymers or the concept of uh, living polymers. Uh, now, living polymers uh, and their stability, these are again a very important uh, segment of uh, uh, polymer reaction engineering. Now, this these living polymerization gives the deepest insight into the processes of uh, ion polymerization. Now, it allows the most thorough control of the size and composition of the resulting macromolecules. So, the polymerization was considered to be the uh, live one as the growing polymers hold their growth tendency indefinitely. So, in other words you may say that all the growing polymer chains they are termed as the living polymers because they are having the capability of uh, uh, joining those monomer molecules or other chains on its own. Now, their spread continues with the absence of termination and chain transition, it is quite obvious. Otherwise, the polymer will become the dead chain or polymer chain will become the dead chain. So, in time, every living polymer ultimately decomposes, sometimes isomerizes or reacts with its environment and consequently loses its activity. So, you may term that this may be the the concept of a termination or a chain transition. Now, we shall refer to the uh, polymers as living if their end group maintain the potential for growth for at least as long as it require the completion of the intended synthesis. So, the polymers of uniform size, they are produced when the propagation is initiated by synthetically prepared living monomeric uh, polymers. Now, uh, cumyl potassium usually is a termed as a living monomeric poly alpha methylstyrene that initiate the anionic growth yielding li uh, living polymer alpha methylstyrene. Similarly, uh, the CH3 CH phenyl ring Cl SNCl4, this is the complex and it is the living monomeric polystyrene. The the, the metal, metallated uh, isobutyric ester is the living monomeric polymethyl methacrylate. So, these are the couple of examples of living polymers. Now, let us uh, do some uh, uh, mathematical calculation that is uh, related to the average degree of polymerization of uh, macromolecules those who are resulted with the help of these living polymers. Now, let us see that uh, M naught um, is the initial concentration of the monomer and I naught is uh, the concentration of the initiator. So, after qualitative conversion of uh, the monomer into the living polymer, the number average degree of polymerization of the resulting macromolecule is given by this equation d p n is equal to m naught upon i naught. Now, the formation of polymers of narrow molecule mass distribution is the only possible in a rapidly initiated living polymerization. Now, rapidly initiated irreversible polymerization usually the free of termination proceeds as the pseudo first order reaction. So, sometimes you need to look into those first order uh, reaction mechanism and uh, some uh, these first order reaction mechanism they are represented by this equation uh, ln concentration of uh, monomer at the start that is uh, uh, m naught 0 and concentration of uh, uh, monomer at time t at the constant t. So, constant t, that is referred as k p to the concentration of the polymer. Now, the longevity of uh, living polymers usually depends on the nature of the uh, polymerized monomer. Uh, it also depends on the choice of the solvent what, uh, diff what different type of a solvents you are taking for the, for the, uh, the polymerization process. The temperature of the solution or melt and the concentration of the growing macromolecules um, 
So, these are the various parameters those affect the longevity of the living polymer. Now, uh, there are certain prerequisite uh, before we taking up this particular uh, concept. The living polymers they must be held at a very low temperature all the time to avoid their decomposition or isomerization during the preparation and storage. The dilution of uh, living polymer is uh, detrimental to their stability. The dilution usually increases the ratio of concentration to harmful impurities found in the solvent uh, to that of the living polymers. This is an, a trivial factor shortening their lifetime. Now, sometimes uh, uh, people may ask about the stability of uh, those living polymers. So, the stability of many living polymer is usually increased by their complexation with the appropriate agent. Now, the degree of complexation is reduced by the dilution, again reducing, uh, reducing the stability of the system. So, the lifetime of uh, living polymer growing by a direct monomer addition is given by our uh, this particular equation that is P and star plus m, m is monomer, then the, the rate constant k p is given as p star n plus 1. So, the lifetime of living polymer destroyed by some the parasitic uh, unimolecular reaction and these uh, parasitic uh, uh, living molecular reactions they are given by p and star living k d that is uh, the, the rate constant under the dead polymer uh, arena then p and dead. Now, it is usually not affected by the presence or absence of the monomer being determined by 1 upon k d k d. Now, if uh, the growth takes place uh, via some liable intermediate sometimes referred as uh, a n star being in equilibrium with the relatively stable living polymer P n reformed by the monomer addition, then this is represented as P n star uh, in under the equilibrium with the A n star. Now, uh, when we discuss about the living polymer concept, uh, uh, there is a technique called seeding. Now, the what is seeding technique? The mixing a slow initiator of living polymer with a small fraction of monomer to be polymerized, it is supposed to lead within a reasonable period to a quantitative conversion of the initiator agent into the living oligomer that is called seed. So, this is again important thing while we discuss about the living polymers. So, the addition of the remaining monomer sometimes results in a rapid polymerization of living polymers of a uniform scale. The most common polymerizations yielding living polymer are those involve some irreversible initiation and propagation. So, the rate of both being proportional to the monomer concentration that we which we have already discussed in the previous lectures. The various species involved in the living polymerization sometimes coexist in a rapid equilibrium with each other. Therefore, the rates of initiation and propagation they depends only on the total concentration of all polymer species referred as P and all the initiating species referred as I. So, they are proportional to the concentration of the monomer which is represented as M. So, uh, when we talk about the mathematical approach of uh, those living polymer, now since uh, P is equal to I naught minus I that is the each reacted initiator yields one living polymer, uh, the pertinent rate they are functions of I and I naught minus I. So, whenever we write that d d i upon d t is a function of i i naught minus i and 
minus d m d t is usually the function of uh, um, concentration of uh, initiator after time t into the concentration at the start minus concentration of uh, initiator um, after time t then plus g i i naught minus i into concentration of monomer. Now, where this uh, f and g they are some function of uh, initiator and uh, polymer determined by the existence of uh, equilibrium established between the initiating, propagating and dormant species. We will discuss this dormant species later on. Now, d m by d i is independent of uh, monomer concentration. Therefore, m naught is only an added constant in the equation yielding monomer concentration after t time t as a function of initiator. So, we may have two kinds of curve um, which, uh, uh, which illustrates the function dependency of monomer and initiator. You can see here there are two things, one is they depend, depicting the dependence of uh, concentration of monomer on i for constant initial concentration of i. So, each curve correspond to the to a different value of m naught and uh, these two cases should be distinguished that all the monomer is polymerized while, while initiator is, is still available that is this one. Um, now, uh, all the initiator was used up before all the monomer polymerized provided that the initial concentration of the latter was sufficiently large. Now, the critical initial concentration of the monomer that is MCR. So, in case in this case some initiator remain always in the system after quantitative conversion of monomer into polymer. Whatever is the initial amount that is uh, immaterial. Now, in in, uh, in this case, uh, all the initiators, initiator is consumed only when, when m naught is greater than m critical. Now, the seeding technique is usually applicable and useful when the propagation of a living polymer is reversible and produces a sufficient quantity of monomer in a relatively short time to allow for quantitative conversion of all the initiator into the living oligomers. Now, let us have a look about the dormant polymers, uh, the dormant polymers, the rate constant of propagation etcetera. So, in this case the end group of living polymer also occur in a number of distinct forms each of which may correspond to the species normally coexisting in harmony with the, all the others. So, the propagation constant of each of these species is different and for some uh, might be virtually 0. So, they are not specifically contribute to the propagation nor they dead because of uh, the spontaneous and reversible interconversion transforms them into the propagating polymers. Now, these temporarily inactive species are called dormant polymers, right. So, th these uh, sometimes if uh, you can actuate all those dormant uh, species or inactive species, then they may, may, may become the active one. The dynamic equilibrium usually established uh, uh, between them and the active polymers they allows uh, allow all of them to participate in the polymerization process. The presence of uh, dormant polymer is usually revealed by the kinetics of uh, the observed overall propagation and sometimes uh, by molecular mass distribution of uh, resulting polymers. Usually, uh, the dormant polymer they do not participate uh, in the polymerization during the time of their dormancy, but eventually they do react. So, that is uh, another important aspect uh, you need to understand. Usually, they are not uh, the participating one in during the process, but still they can continue their uh, uh, reactive attitude. 
So, the span of their dormancy is uh, determined by the reciprocal of uh, the rate constant of their conversion into the active form. So, the, ac the extent of their contribution to the overall reaction usually depends on the relaxation time of uh, the reversible process. Now, uh, sometimes when we talk about the kinetics of uh, these dormant polymers, the observed propagation constant uh, usually referred as Kp. This is uh, composed of variety of uh, species endowed with the different end group is usually given by the sum uh, uh, as the sum that is summation Fi Kpi. Now, Fi this denotes the mole fraction of the species possessing the end group i and k p i is the respective propagation rate constant. Now, um, let us talk about the determination of the concentration of uh, living polymer. The total concentration of uh, all the interconvertible polymeric species that ultimately participate in growth being in uh, small concentration, usually it increasing uh, having the increasing trend while all other are dormant. So, the polymer with inert end group uh, unable to propagate and is spontaneously transformed to active ones and they are referred as the dead polymer which we have already explained in the previous slides that how we can refer all these things as a dead polymer. So, they cannot uh, propagate uh, they may be termed as sometimes terminated or inactive uh, polymeric chain. Now, uh, sometimes people may talk about the capping technique. So, the capping technique is uh, a convenient and reliable method for determining the concentration of uh, living polymer. The addition of a carefully chosen uh, reagent to a solution of uh, living polymer transforms their active and uh, sometimes liable end group into new ones. Uh, the capping method sometimes determine the, the concentration of uh, the active end groups and uh, usually it does not provide information about their nature. So, that, uh, that is again important point. So, you cannot uh, address the, the knowledge about uh, their nature of those polymers through the, the capping methodology. Now, it is necessary to ensure the complete conversion of uh, the original end groups into the updated ones. Uh, sometimes the equilibrium uh, of the reaction may be referred as x plus y. They should be shifted uh, uh, far to the right in this direction and uh, your Lee Chatelier's principle uh, sometimes uh, gives a useful information. So, this is uh, sometimes uh, achieved by the, the increasing the, conver uh, the concentration of y. So, it is a very common phenomena to address the things based on the Lee Chatelier's principle. Now, at last uh, we talk about uh, the polymerizability of uh, the things. The polymerizability and uh, the monomer living polymer equilibria, this is again a unique concept. Now, the polymerization of pure liquid monomer to a high molecular mass uh, amorphous polymer is thermodynamically allowed when the standard free energy change delta G of the conversion uh, liquid mon uh, monomer, monomeric segment of an amorphous polymer is negative. Now, remember this uh, uh, delta G, this uh, delta G is a very important uh, phenomena that is the Gibbs free energy and uh, it is it, uh, it gives you an information about the feasibility of uh, the reaction and uh, you can assess that whether this reaction is possible or not. So, the knowledge of this uh, uh, change in the Gibbs free energy is extremely important in due course of time. Now, this uh, delta G usually uh, this delta G is equal to delta H minus T 
delta s this is uh, the polymerization uh, uh, for the polymerization process it's uh, it tells you this particular equation tells you about the thermodynamic feasibility of any reaction now uh, this uh, particular reaction is feasible only at a temperature t lower than the critical one now this t, uh, this uh, t is equal to delta h upon delta s this provided that the standard heat and entropy change of the conversion are both negative. So, uh, the polymerization is the only possible or polymerization is only possible at temperature greater than T extent for the positive heat and the entropy of the conversion. So, that you make this delta G negative therefore, you can make that particular reaction feasible in due course of time. Uh, this uh, critical temperature which we are talking about uh, here that is uh, sometimes referred as Tc or sometimes referred as Te is referred to as uh, the ceiling temperature in the former case as uh, the floor temperature in the latter case. So, the polymerization is uh, uh, permitted at all temperature due to negative heat and the positive entropy of the conversion so that the delta G may become negative. So, polymerization is only forbidden when the heat of conversion is positive and entropy is negative. So, whenever you wish to seize the, the polymerization, then you have to look into uh, the this delta G concept and in that case, you can seize the polymerization when there is uh, the heat of conversion is positive and by making the entropy negative. So, in this particular chapter, we discussed about the living polymers, we discussed about the dormant polymers, we discussed about the feasibility of polymerization processes, especially under the head of polymerizability of those monomer and initiators. Uh, for your convenience, we have enlisted uh, several references uh, which may be used as uh, uh, further reading and further research if you would like to have it on. Thank you very much.